So in fact, as an environmental consultant and blogger, I have witnessed a growing number of people who had a rather fatalistic attitude towards um, really the future. And um, they seem to lose faith in humanity. And yet, despite of you, all you've gone through, uh, you obviously kept faith and especially through um, the capacity of children to uh, save our future. At the same time, you, you wonder why there seem to be some disconnection between the brain and the heart. Isn't this a bit paradoxical? I think that what's happened, why we have this, you know, there's a huge amount of apathy out there. And I think that thinking thoughtful people who perhaps aren't really, really understanding the issues, they feel, well, everything's wrong. I mean, only read the newspapers um, and you see what's happening around the world, look at television, listen to the radio. And it's grim news everywhere. And so people think of this whole thing and they think, well, there's nothing I can do. Therefore, they do nothing. It's a feeling of helplessness. And that's, I think, the biggest problem that we face. So why, how can I still have hope? Um, it's, it's partly because of the energy of young people and that once they understand the problems and are empowered to take action, they have so much energy and so much enthusiasm. Everywhere I go, there are young people, you know, our program's now in 132 countries and all ages. And these young people, you know, with shining eyes wanting to tell Dr. Jane what they've been doing to make this a better world. And we hear so often this little saying, think globally, mm. act locally. Don't. Do it the other way around. Because when you have hundreds of groups acting locally and they're communicating with each other, and yes, we've cleaned this river. We've cleaned our river here. We've cleaned the river on the other side of the world. The fish have come back. The birds have come back. Suddenly, you act locally, and then you realize, yes, I can think globally, because out there, there are other people succeeding as I'm alone. succeeding. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's the, you know, that's, that's the main reason that I have hope, and it's also the human brain. And what we can do when we do it right is pretty extraordinary. And the resilience of nature. We can destroy a piece of nature, and, you know, with a little time, perhaps a little help, nature can once again become beautiful and sustain life mm -hmm. and finally the indomitable human spirit the people who face unbelievable misfortune or problems and they won't give up and if they don't succeed then they blaze a trail for others to follow and they inspire people to keep going like you <laughs> <laughs> um well that's um reaching another problem is how to raise awareness about um, environmental destruction happening on the other side of the world and miles from your home. And this is especially true when it comes to Western societies where most of us never seen a chimps and never hold a chimps in your arms. So um, how, from your experience, uh, what are the key drivers to draw their attention? I think that movies are really important. I know they were for me, the first National Geographic movies mm -hmm. were what made people understand that what I was saying was true. And I think um, a movie like this, Chimpanzees, is immensely powerful. You cannot sit through that movie and come away thinking that we are so different from the other animals because we're so like chimpanzees and it's so obvious and you see the tenderness on one hand you see the violence you see the skillful use of tools you see the efforts the young ones make to learn how to do it right and you know it's intensely moving um, it's extremely educational and you can't come away and if you then learn that chimps are threatened as indeed they are with extinction in place after place you then want to help them because you've seen what it is that you want to help. And you don't want that to vanish. Maybe we should put governments sitting in the movies to I watch more films. I think we probably <laughs> should. Let's sit all our politicians in some of these That's movies. Right. Um, so one, one last question. You, 
You mentioned once attending a UN conference where a group of Eskimos asked the question, what will it take to melt the ice in the human heart? Did you actually find an answer? I think the answer is different for different people. Mm. And when people ask me, you know, how, how did you get through to that person, that politician or whatever it is, I think the answer, first of all, is to listen. Who are you talking to? Not go in with your prepared questions, your prepared, you know, why are you doing this and why? Okay, who are you? Oh, perhaps you love dogs. I love dogs too. Find a, a connection with that person. And then I think the most powerful way to, to melt the ice in anybody's heart is by telling stories. It's telling stories. It's getting people to feel inside themselves what you're talking about, not batter at them with facts and figures. It doesn't do any good, at least not in my experience. That's not my way. My way is telling stories. Well, maybe environmental activists sometimes tend to uh, send us the, the same message when we should adapt it to several people. I think, I think you know, sometimes people are very passionate about the environment, but they go about it the wrong way and they end up alienating people. Mm. So people have to want to help, and to want to help, you need to understand. Gosh, I didn't realize how what goes on in Africa can actually impact the climate on the other side of the world. Gosh, then perhaps what I do over here can help the save the forests over there, which will help climate change. So this is all interlinked. Mm -hmm. And you can't batter people with those facts, but if you can tell stories, then that's going to have much more impact. Well, thank you very much. Thanks.